Yeah, I'm going to briefly introduce you to uh, Boolean algebra. Uh, now, I would like to say that uh, for um, class on uh, Tuesday, uh, the binary hexadecimal video is going to be much more important than the concepts that we're uh, going to talk about in this particular video. Um, so if you haven't watched the binary and hexadecimal video, I would highly recommend you go back and watch that one um, before getting into these videos. Um, okay, let's talk about Boolean algebra. Uh, Boolean algebra was actually invented a very long time ago by this man right here, uh, George Boole, um, in 1847. Um, so 1847, as you can imagine, uh, was a long time ago. So Boolean algebra was really not invented with digital circuits in mind. Um, so it was actually just a, a subset of math at that point in time. Had no uh, applications to circuits uh, at that particular time uh, because digital circuits didn't really exist um, at that point particular moment. Um, so, um, as you are already aware, Boolean algebra relies on the fact that there's really only two values um, in a particular system. Uh, true, false, or you might see them represented as 0 and 1 in this particular case, since we're interested in the binary system. And the operators involved with Boolean algebra, there's really only three um, that are necessary, and, or, and not, which I'm sure you're already familiar with through your uh, programming experience um, using Java or some other programming language. With those three operators, we can actually specify any logic that we could ever um, possibly conceive of, um, whether that be in a digital circuit or otherwise, in a purely mathematical sense. So those three operators are really the only ones that are necessary. Um, in fact, uh, I think you can get away with even fewer than that. Um, but there are additional operators as part of Boolean algebra that will be introduced as time goes on to make things a little bit easier for us uh, to discuss um, certain uh, problems and situations. Um, so be on the lookout for those. Uh, okay, uh, the last uh, thing I want to touch on in this uh, very quick video is how to evaluate Boolean expressions. Again, you probably already had some practice doing this in uh, your computer science, your previous computer science courses, uh, but it's good to mention it now since we're on the topic. Uh, the biggest thing is to pay attention to the order of operations. So here you see a Boolean expression uh, represented as a series of uh, ones and zeros. Right? And so I have ampersands in here to represent and. Typically, um, and is represented by multiplication. So it could be um, you know, uh, the multiplication sign or just putting the numbers up against each other. I use ampersands here just to make it explicitly clear what I was talking about so we didn't get confused by the uh, arithmetic operations. Um, but you know, 1 represents true in this particular case, and 0 represents false. And so uh, an order of, or order of operations as it um, applies to Boolean expressions um, not always happens uh, before ands and ors. And then we also have to worry about the grouping of parentheses. So in this particular expression, the first thing that would happen would be um, nodding this one that we see here. So that effectively turns it into a zero. And then we would evaluate the stuff inside of these two smaller parentheses. Actually, it looks like I'm missing a parenthesis on the end here. Whoops. Anyhow, um, so one or zero is going to be one. That's a true statement. And then I'm going to apply this not to, to that particular value, which turns this entire expression here inside this first set of parentheses into a zero. Over here, I then evaluate what's inside of these parentheses. right? 0 and 1 is going to be 0. They both have to be true. They both have to be 1s in order for this to evaluate to be 1. So we have 0 or 0, which is going to be 0, right? And then over here, we see 1 anded with that 0, which is going to be 0 as well, which means this whole entire expression here evaluates to be a 0. Um, so the big takeaway here is pay attention to order of operations. Um, not takes precedence over ands and ors. And you can use parentheses uh, if you would like to help group things together to make your uh, expressions more clear. Um, in the next video, we'll talk a little bit more about the history of um, Boolean logic as it applies to digital circuits. And then we'll talk a little bit more about um, creating circuits after that.